All right, everyone, welcome to this video here. And this video, I just wanted to show you how I'm going to use um, a simple C program to wrap functions to then um, link the object file into some assembly. And mainly I wanna do this because uh, I guess I'm lazy and I just, I wanna do something simple in this assembly and that is to use printf, but there's been some changes to how and where printf lives in the, the C runtime. And um, I've got another video, I'll link to it right here. If you want to check out how to grab those legacy definitions, you can include those. Um, this I just thought was maybe a, a little bit more of a straightforward or, I don't know, modern approach. Anyway, if you come across any of the assembly shorts that I'm doing or using or producing, um, this I wanted to provide just kind of the background as to the kind of the evolution and this wrapper library. Now, um, let's just take a look at a real simple assembly program here. I'm gonna actually use this in another video. So all I wanted to kind of point out here is that there's this call to this this what this function we're going to eventually get out of our C program or our C code uh, w print int and so I want to be able to provide kind of some some basic library functions here some basic functions that allow me just to print and not have to worry about the format strings or anything else now the C program as you can see here w for me is just going to be wrapper so wrapper for print in to wrapper for print string and these are quite straightforward um, you know including the standard IO headers and then you know, defining the format strings, taking a single argument then for the value that wants to, that you want to print uh, to the console as well as a, a pointer to a string, and then just using print printf to in order to print those. Okay, um, so to to get these things to work together, that is to get our assembly or this assembly to call this w print int, uh, what we'll first do. We'll just explore creating the object file for or from CL, the Visual Studio compiler here at the command line. And the argument slash C will tell Microsoft, tell the compiler to not generate the executable, to not perform the linking, to just give us this object file. Now we can actually use dump bin with an argument of disassemble to get or to look at the underlying object file. This would be a cough file format. I know a lot of stuff just flew by there, uh, but we can go through this relatively quickly. Here's our function for print int. Here is our function for print string. And you can see that, um, I guess there's not a whole lot of surprise here. We have typical prolog. Uh, the arguments moved into EAX, pushed onto the stack. This is the pointer for that format specifier string. And then there's a call to printf. Very similar here with w print string. Prolog arguments, same format called the printf. Now, uh, what the compiler added for us, if I scroll down a little bit here, is the actual printf function, which you can see now the code, and then any additional functions that are gonna be dependent upon or that printf is dependent upon. And so now you can see some additional code that's been added by the compiler. Okay, next up, we'll use NASM uh, to assemble our uh, assembly file here. This will generate another object file. Uh, you'll see here that's 4.obj. And we can do very similar, use dump bin, disassemble uh, 4.obj. And very straightforward here because our assembly is very simple. We have our call to wprintint, which is the symbol that the linker will eventually resolve from our other object file. So in order to bring this all together, we'll use the Microsoft linker, link.exe define a subsystem of console, define the entry point. Then we have our two object files, for.obj and win.io.obj, and then the libraries that we want to link against. So kernel 32, you may have noticed there was a call to exit process, and then the, uh, the C runtime, ucrt.lib. And what this should do, once we're all done, is give us the executable 4.exe, which in this case just prints the integer counter for a for loop. Uh, we can take a look at this in IDA. So I already have this disassembled. You can see we're at start, we're at the entry point. Um, here's that call to, you know, originally in our assembly, it's just a symbol for w print int. And that's now been resolved here. We have, you know, we can probably look at the op codes just to see, cause that should be a relative displacement, yep. There we go. So it, it understands relative to where the current or where this call instruction, when the instruction pointer is here, uh, where the linker, the linker is then responsible for adding and updating those, those locations. Um, 
this has just been added into the to the resulting executable. The linker was able to take the two object files and combine them to add, together and then update those references. Uh, very similar, um, here is the call to printf. Okay, again, relative call, uh, 4010A0. And we can scroll down a little bit and you'll see here is 4010A0. And this hopefully looks a little bit familiar from our, our, uh, our disassembly of the object file. All right, so you can see again here, this is the linker combined or coalesced those two object files and then updated all of the appropriate references locations via relative offsets. And that's it. So uh, again, if you see me using any of these methods or functions inside of some assembly shorts or some basic assembly videos, this is how I generated it. Here's the corresponding code that will likely grow over time. I plan to get these into GitHub at some point, but uh, I'm going to wait until I've made some content and really understood how and uh, you know how I want to use this. So anyways, if you have any feedback, any input, any advice for how I could do things better, I'm all ears. Please feel free to use the comments below. Otherwise, thanks for tuning in.